Hello again, my friends. And I, today I'd like to talk to you about a question that I've heard so many times, and you've probably heard it as well on more than one occasion. If humans come from apes, why are there still apes? When I first heard this question, I thought that's stupid on so many levels. After a bit of thought, I realized it's not only stupid on a superficial level, but part of the question rests on a misunderstanding. And it's a misunderstanding I held until only a short while ago. And the deeper question is, what is an ape? This, among several other things, is what I'd like to delve into uh, much deeper in this video. Whenever I get asked this question, and I do get asked this a lot, especially on uh, say for Facebook threads and, and, and uh, debates of that type, my first reaction is always, if paper comes from trees, why are there still trees? Obviously, when they made the paper, they didn't use all the trees. Um, if a snowman is made from snow, why is there still snow? Well, obviously, they didn't use all the snow. Uh, recently, I heard a much improved version of this, of this question. If man was made from dirt, why is there still dirt? Now, does this logic apply to our original question? What I mean here is when apes evolved into humans, did, they, did not all of them evolve? I thought this was a sufficient answer until I realized I didn't fully understand what an ape is. Let me start by stating clearly, I'm no expert of any kind. I'm not an expert in biology. I'm not an expert in evolution. Uh, what I am is a truth-seeking atheist. So if you want an in-depth analysis of evolutionary biology or anything related in that field, there are tons of videos explaining these things in a lot more detail. It's the realization that I don't understand the topic sufficiently. That's what drove me to do some investigating. And in this video, I'm hoping to um, be able to describe a complex topic in a, in a fairly understandable way. Another apologetic favorite is, have you ever seen an ape turn into a human? I never considered how wrong these questions were until recently, until I realized I didn't know what an ape is. In my ignorance, I thought apes and monkeys were two species of, of, of animal. So I'm hoping some of you also made that mistake and I don't feel alone in this. If I asked you to show me a picture of an ape, what would you show me? I decided to try it out and I googled ape. I clicked on and clicked on images. This is what I got. Yes, they are apes, but more specifically, they are orangutans, chimpanzees and gorillas. So what does an ape look like? What is an ape? I found I was committing a category error. Gorillas, champions, chimpanzees and orangutans exist on a species level, while an ape is at the genus level. Allow me to explain. In the 18th century, century Carl Linnaeus, um, building on the work of earlier people, realized that the identifiable characteristics of organisms could be classified into a hierarchical structure. And in doing so, he designed the first taxonomic classification system which although still in use today, is a, it was slightly simpler than it is in use right now. He identified the structure, but he didn't understand how it worked, how one organism with similar traits descends from another. This was answered over a hundred years later by Charles Darwin, when he came to understand that natural selection was the main driving force. I'm going to discuss this taxonomic structure as it is critical to understanding why apes not only don't, but can't turn into humans. Taxonomically, living organisms are divided into eight, eight, eight categories, branching out like a tree that splits into several branches, and each of those split into several more additional branches. These taxonomical branches are called domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. All plants and animals, including humans, exist ultimately at the species level. A species is essentially a group of living organisms consisting of, individual, of individuals capable of exchanging genes and interbreeding. So essentially, if, they, if the group of organisms can interbreed, they are a species. Let's begin by taking a look at how humans fit into this hierarchy and understanding, understanding how we are apes. But before we begin, we need to understand that these uh, categories are based on characteristics. It is these characteristics that define things. Okay, so what do I mean? Take this for example. We can clearly identify it as a book, but why? A book has certain characteristics and all objects 
that have those same characteristics are classified as books. A book is a grouped set of pages bound and glued or sewn along one end and having a cover of some sort. So take this object, a ruler. You identified it as a ruler even before I said it, but why? Because you recognize the characteristics of a ruler. It is a wood, plastic or metal strip with straight edges and divided into measurable units. Every object you will ever encounter in life has characteristics and it is by these characteristics that we identify and classify these objects. If I pick up an object that consists of pages, is bound on one end and has some form of cover, I automatically identify it as a book. It is a book. Now the same goes for living organisms. They are also identified and classified according to their characteristics. Sometimes these, those characteristics are obvious and sometimes not. Take a bat for example. It could easily be identified as a bird because it flies, but it isn't because of its characteristics. Having said that, let's take a look at human characteristics and how we fit into the classification of life. Firstly, at, at the species level, we find ourselves with the most complex and numerous characteristics. Our taxonomic name at this level is Homo sapien. Homo sapien is the Latin word for wise humans. Obviously, we, we bestowed that name on ourselves. I doubt anything in the animal kingdom uh, other than us, us would have given us that title. The next level up taxonomically is called genus. Um, it's a principal taxonomic category that ranks above species and below family and is denoted by a capitalized Latin name. Generally, a, a, a genus uh, level will encompass several species. In our case, however, we are the only remaining species in the Homo, in the Homo genus. There were many others, including Homo habilis, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo ergaster, Homo rudolfensis, and Naledi, all of which are now ex extinct. Bearing in mind organisms are, are classified according to their characteristics, let's take a look at some of what constitutes a genus classification. And bear in mind here I'm speaking specifically about the genus Homo. Um, they have a large cranial capacity, a limb structure for an erect posture, a bipedal gait, uh, the ability to make precision tools and fully opposable thumbs. As humans we have large skulls relative to other animals. We have the limb structure for an erect posture. We walk erect on two legs, are able to make precision tools and have fully opposable thumbs. So clearly we are identified as Homo. The next rung on the, on the taxonomical ladder is family. And at the family level, we, are characteristic, we all characteristically fall under uh, hominidae, uh, whose members are hominids or great apes. A hominid is defined as a primate of the family hominidae, including all hominids, both extant and extinct, and their ancestors. Apes are divided into two groups, the great apes and the lesser apes. The great apes um, include gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, and humans. The lesser apes are the gibbons, who belong to a, to a different family entirely. The characteristics of the hominidae family include uh, hair instead of fur, fingernails instead of claws, uh, opposable thumbs, and padded fingers with fingerprints. Uh, once again, we fit neatly into the category that makes us apes at the family level, just as we fit into, just as we fit into Homo um, or human at, at, at the genus level. The rest of the taxonomic f levels I want to move through fairly quickly, uh, just to show how by characteristic we are each of those levels. And once again, by the taxonomic levels, I'm sp speaking specifically about um, the, 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 the line that we come down from, uh, which eventually ended up as, as humans. After the family level, we find the order level, uh, namely primates, um, who, are who are characterized by arboreal adaption, the ability to live in trees, bigger brains than their predecessors, a heightened sense of vision, opposable thumbs, um, shoulder flexibility, uh, flat nails um, as, as opposed to claws or hooves, uh, forward-facing eyes. As you can see, we also neatly fit into that category. Right, the next level up is the class level, which is in, in our case is called mammalia, um, whose characteristics include the growing of hair or fur, uh, warm-bloodedness, they're born live, they f fed milk from mammary glands, and they have more complex brain than others. Um, so clearly we fit 
very well into mammalia as well, making us mammals. Uh, the next level up is phylum. Uh, in, in, in the phylum level, we are, we are known as chordata. Uh, a chordate's characteristics include uh, the presence of a notochord, which a notochord is a flexible like rod structure um, that supports the main, the, 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 the main structure of the body. Uh, in most instances, this constitutes a spine or a backbone. The next characteristic is a dorsal hollow nerve cord. Um, this is a hollow tube that carries the nerve signals between the brain and the lower back. In most instances, it is a sheath within the spine through which the nerves run uh, to the lower back. Dorsal simply means the upper side of the body. Chordates also have a pharyngeal gill slits that are uh, paired. Uh, these slits are for filtering food particles from water. These evolved into gills for filtering oxygen from water and later evolved into your upper and lower jaws and pharynx. So chordates also have a ventricle heart, which is a thick wall chamber within the heart that forcibly pumps blood out of the heart. And post anal tail, um, these are extensions of the spinal cord that, expend, uh, that extend beyond the anus. As you can see, we also fit by characteristic neatly into, into that level, um, which makes us chordates as well. Um, before the phylum level, uh, we find the kingdom of animalia, um, whose characteristics include the ability to move independently. Um, they lack cell walls or plastids. Plastids are double wall, uh, are double membrane organelles which are, are found in the cells of plants and algae. These are responsible for collecting and storing um, food for the plant. On this level, the, another characteristic is that they are heterotropic um, since they cannot make their own food. So heterotrophs are essentially consumers who obtain their food from uh, producers or consumers. They also have excretory and sensory organs and, and a basic neurological system. And within this level, reproduction becomes sexual for the first time. And at the most basic level, we find the domain of eukarya, um, whose cells have a nucleus. These include all animals, plants and fungi and many uh, multicellular organisms. So it's, it's simple to see how we fit into each of these levels by characteristic. So not only, not only are we human at the species level, we are also eukaryotes, animals, chordates, mammals, primates and hominids. Remember, hominids are great apes by definition and we are hominids, therefore we are apes. Please keep in mind, as, I, as I, I read these different level characteristics in turn, they, they appear to be becoming more primitive, and that's because they are. I'm reading them from where we are now to our most primitive forms. Following these in reverse order to how I'm presenting them will show a gradual progression to our current state. Also note how, as we progress, we build on what we previously had. Nothing suddenly appears. It's a gradual evolution over a long period of time. I hope this has um, been able to, 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 to hopefully clear up some, some issues you might have had about um, what apes are and, and, and how we have come from apes or not come from apes, as, as it turns out. Um, that we are apes, so the, the question, um, if humans come from apes, why are they still apes, is a bit nonsensical because we come from a common ancestor. Um, not us and apes. Um, we, we are apes. So us and, uh, and, and our cousins, uh, orangutans, gorillas, um, chimpanzees, and, and our second cousins, the bonobos, come from a common ancestor that was also that they were all apes, um, but a much primitive, uh, a much more primitive form. And as you go back, back over time, the form becomes more and more primitive. But it, every time these these levels come together in, 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 into the previous taxonomic level. They, um, they have another common ancestor, an earlier common ancestor, and these common ancestors work back and back uh, in, in time and, and, and in simplicity to more previous forms. So in answer to the question, um, did we, if we evolved from apes, um, why are there still apes? We didn't. Thanks again for watching. Um, it, it, was, it was lovely to speak to you again. Please remember to, um, if, if nobody's heard of, of this channel or, or heard any of the videos, show them. Um, I, I'd be very grateful if you could pass it along. And uh, as always, keep well, be safe, and I'll speak to you again soon.